back everybody. Today I'm gonna to go through some video that we shot a while ago during the COVID-19 lockdown. And it's me attaching the false keel onto the boat. Also, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show flipping the boat over and talk about why I decided to do that at this phase of the game. After three months of coronavirus lockdown, we're finally able to get limited access back into my studio. So I'm gonna untie this. It's been tied on here for the entire time that the boat's been planked. And this is what gave the curvature to the keel. This is the keel sticking out here. So now I'm going to untie this rope and hopefully the boat will hold it and it won't go boing and everything will fall apart. Okay, I'm going to try and saw off this. I really like seeing how the cross section came together to create one full thickness all the way across. I was really surprised to see what a huge difference it made to have the planks trimmed down flush with the transom. It was really nice. Starting to take shape. Still have to uh, plug all of the holes in the bottom, many screw holes, and plane down a lot of stuff, add the keel.
this is one of those steps I really didn't want to forget. I had to mark out each of the stations on the inside of the hull so that I'd know where they needed to go once I flipped the boat over. So the goal here is basically just to get the skag trimmed down so that you got a straight run all the way along the bottom of the boat so that the keel will not have a nice flat spot to sit on. In my case, I decided to use a 14 foot long piece of dug fur for the false keel. The plans are really good about specifying exactly how wide the keel should be at each point along the boat and also the bevel along the sides of the false keel.
So in the previous video, I explained how I had beveled the false stem down to the correct angles, and I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna blend into the false keel. So here I've got the false keel beveled to the correct angles, and I'm going to have to kind of fair those two pieces together at a later time once, once the false keel is attached. So in this shot you can see really well how I marked out the width and the bevels that go along the false keel and it tapers down in both the bow and the stern. In this shot, you can see that I haven't cut the centerboard slot into the false keel. And I didn't do that for a couple of reasons, but primarily I was just worried about getting the width of the slot or the length of the slot imprecise. And I really wanted to have it attached before I cut and matched the slot because I could use the previous hole as a guide. And so that influenced my decision to actually flip the boat over once the false keel was attached. The other reason why I decided to flip the boat over at this phase of the project was 
because I'm just not set up to start sanding and fairing the bottom of the boat right now in my studio. Um, there's a lot of other things around and the dust and everything would just be so obnoxious that I really felt like I could just continue working on the inside of the boat and then when I'm ready to start fairing and sanding and painting, I can set up some kind of a tarp around the whole project. So at the beginning of the project, Rob helped me set up time-lapse photos of the entire thing. So you can see everything up to this moment in just a few seconds here. This was so exciting to see the boat flipped up, looking like a boat, looking like something you could actually jump inside and travel around. So while I did procrastinate on <laughs> doing the bottom, um, I think it was definitely the right choice because I could continue working on the various parts of the inside. I put the straps in there so that uh, it wouldn't lose its shape while I was making the frames. Um, which I'll show you guys how I installed those later. And then the only other thing to do was uh, make more room in the studio by disassembling the construction frame and uh, getting to work on some other parts of the boat. So that's all the time we have for today, but in my next video, I'm hoping to show the process for building the spars, and then we'll get back into the hull in subsequent episodes. Take care. Bye.